Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. Oh, drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples, and many of them say the secret word. This uh, moth-eaten duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is food. Scram. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> George, proceed. Well, Groucho, we have a couple of young single people for you tonight, and uh, their names are Miss Barbara Schmidt and Mr. Mario DeRay. So would you come in, please, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the South of Plymouth. <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doremi uh, A. Uh, which one is Barbara? Oh, I am. That's, that's your Barbara. That's about the silliest question I guess I've ever asked on this show. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Barbara? I'm 18. 18, huh? A lovely age for a girl. In fact, it's a lovely age for a woman of 40. <laughs> Mr. You're not married, are you, Barbara? No, I'm not. You're not. Uh, are you engaged? No. Completely free agent? I'm completely <laughs> unattached. Is that so? Yes. You mean your zip is broken? <laughs> well, something's holding you together, and I, I wish it was me. <laughs> Where are you from originally, Heaven? Originally, I'm from Albany, New York. Albany, yeah? Uh... Yes. And now I live in Pasadena. Oh. Well, uh, tell me, do you go to school or do you have a job or are you self-sustaining -sus or self-supporting or what? No, I go to school. I go to UCLA and I'm majoring in English. Oh. Oh, that's pretty good. Can you speak it at all? Uh... <laughs> well, why did you come to California to learn English? Don't they uh, speak English in Albany? <laughs> yes, well, I prefer the climate here in California. Oh. You're Mario, is that your name? Mario. Yeah. Mario. You're not Mario Alonzo, are you? No, I'm Mario Dure. Are you related to Mario Lanza? No, but Al Dure is my brother. He's related to Mario Lanza? No, he's my brother. Your brother is Al Dure? Yes. Well, congratulations. You're very lucky. <laughs> now then, who is Al Dure? <laughs> he's a movie star. He's a movie star? Oh, movie yeah. star. The only movie star I know is Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> You're a pretty big brute, Mario, aren't you? I'm big, yes. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't play football. Why is it? Well, I do play football. I play for the University of Southern California. I play with the team. You play with USC? That's just what I said. I'm surprised you don't play football. <laughs> <laughs> you hate USC, uh, Bob? I don't hate it. No. But I'm for UCLA. Uh, so am I. <laughs> Oh, only in the last five minutes. Oh. <laughs> Up to now, I was a fan of Rutgers. <laughs> now, Barbara, I imagine life must be interesting for a pretty girl in college. I've never been a pretty girl in college, but uh, I'm only guessing. Now, I wasn't even a pretty girl in high school. <laughs> Does anything exciting ever happen to you, Barbara? The most exciting thing that ever happened to me was I was chosen the 1954 Rose Queen, Pasadena. Oh, you were queen of the roses, yes. eh? Oh, that's a very high honor. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pretty tough competition. Yes, yeah. there was quite a bit. Well, enough. Let's get down to brass tacks. We've had enough of this historical stuff. Uh, Mario, will you marry this girl? <laughs> no, I can't. You can. I'm going steady right now. Well, call her up and tell her you're going to marry Barbara. <laughs> She'll understand. Women are very understanding that way. <laughs> well, say, your girl must be quite a dish, Mario, if you'll turn down the Rose Queen for her. How did you meet your inner Marata? <laughs> well, I met her about two years ago at a dance, and I liked her, so a couple of weeks later I asked her out, and that's it. We've been going out ever since. 
you were so crazy about it, why did you wait two weeks? Were you saving up a dime for the phone? <laughs> I was busy doing other things. <laughs> other things? <laughs> My boy, take it from an old hand in these matters. There are no other things. <laughs> Why is this Dazzler? Is she, she out front here tonight? She no, she, no, she's in Pinole, California. That's about 400 miles north of L.A. And she she's was, 400 miles from here? Yeah. She's a secretary for the district attorney up there. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> you mean your girl is 400 miles away and you turned down a date with probably the most beautiful girl in America who is standing right next to you? I have to, I guess. <laughs> no choice. You know, that's like living in Las Vegas and going all the way to Cedar Rapids just to play bingo in a church bazaar. <laughs> well, you're, you're an attractive couple, and marry off, you're smart, you'll marry this girl as soon as she can support you. <laughs> I forgot to ask you one question. Do you have a fella? No. Or did I ask you? No, Why not? Well, I have many fellows. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, let's play your bet you. I had a fellow wanted to meet you. It was me. <laughs> you both know the rules of this swindle, uh, this game. <laughs> you selected the musical category. These are all top tunes of the last 20 years. And Fenneman, just keep looking right here. Huh? Okay, now what do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way to 100. 50? 70? 70. 70. 70. Okay, this song is from the score of the musical Knickerbocker Holiday. Now, you give me the title. September song. September song is absolutely all right. And you're off to a good start to have $170. Now, what are you going to take a fling at? Seems like 75 or 80 or... Eighty? We'll go eighty. Eighty. Eighty dollars. Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein wrote this song about ten years ago. What's the name of it? Play it. Let it snow, let it snow. That's right. Let it snow is right. <laughs> now I have two hundred and fifty dollars. What are you going to go for now? Ninety. We'll go for 90. 90. This song was a big hit a few years ago. Let's see if you can identify it. Wish You Were Here? Wish You Were Here is right. You <laughs> now have $340. <clears throat> Last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? We'll go $100. $100. This song was written by Rogers and Hammerstein. What is the title of it? Play it, Jack. Hello, young lovers. Hello, young lovers. That's right. Now give them a big kiss. Oh! <laughs> and you wind up with four hundred forty dollars. There goes that girl and the district attorney and everything else. Well, thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth dealer. <laughs> Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent us and we want to drive this car. Oh, what a thrill you're going to feel when you're behind the wheel. DeSoto is the smartest car, smartest of the smart cars. It's so stylish and now it's Groucho says. Let's drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. From every angle. From here. From here or from here. DeSoto is smart. DeSoto is the car that makes people stop and look. The car you'll be proud to have standing in front of your house. It's smart to own the smartest of the smart cars. Here is DeSoto's smart double cockpit instrument panel with a new flight control lever, convenient, but out of your way because it's used so seldom. And outside, accenting the forward look is the dramatic slash of color we call a color sweep. It's beautiful styling like this that makes the new DeSoto the smartest of the smart cars. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today.
Uh, Groucho, we have a man with an unusual occupation for you. He's Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. His partner is a housewife. She's Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common way, something you find around the house. Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich and Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. A couple of pretty fancy monikers there. Mariana, where are you from? I am originally from Czechoslovakia, and I came of a friend in Portugal to the United States. You came with a friend from Portugal to the United States? I came with my best friend, my husband. Your best friend is uh -huh. your husband? Uh-huh. Well, that may be true in Czechoslovakia, but... <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts behind the Iron Curtain did you come from? Prague, Czechoslovakia. Prague, huh? Mm -hmm. You were poor but Prague at the time, huh? <laughs> Could you give us some idea of your age, Mariana? I'd rather skip that question. You'd rather skip it? Well, skip around here and then get us your age. I heard once Luella Farson said that a girl who tells her age is liable to tell anything. Well, I expect to weigh many other things out of you before we go. You're uh, Jules Vine, Lucius Cameron. I was right? named after Jules Vine. Is that right? Yes, and you're, you're he was named first, and I was named after. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> where are you from, Vine? I was born in Sioux City, Iowa. And oh, that's where all the lawyers come from, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know that. Well, the Sioux City, I imagine that's where. Oh, I see. Well, I spent three years in Iowa, three years in Kansas, and then spent most of my boyhood in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do? Groucho, I'm a hydrologist. You mean you eat only vegetables? <laughs> What's a, well, what a, is a hydrologist is a man who locates, or a woman who locates uh, underground liquids, oil, or water. You mean like a bootlegger? <laughs> yes, if they're underground. Well, how do, you, how do you go about finding water? Well, I have instruments that I developed over a period of 32 years of locating, locating wells. Well, what makes this thing work? It uh, takes on a charge from the electrical aura around the body, and uh, this positive charge causes it to become attracted to the negative charge coming up by reflection from underground water. Well, you lost me quite some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever found any wells for people? Yes, sir. I've located thousands of them. I don't know how many thousands. Well, how, how much do you charge for finding water? A cent a gallon? Or? Well, the price ranges from $25 to $100, uh, $100 per well, or $100 a day flat rate. $100 a day? Yes, sir. Well, you must be finding water because you're saying you're soaking somebody. That's huh? right. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is food. I'm sure you're familiar with this game. I don't have to explain yes, sir, it to you. This is a spelling quiz. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Spell it and then pronounce it. All right, what do you start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 70. 70 suits me. 70 suits me, too. All right, spell the word lieutenant, meaning an officer in military service. L-I-E-U-T-E-N-A-N-T. Right. This kid's from Czechoslovakia, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> now I have $170. What's he going to go for? 80. 80 is you, okay? Right. Sure. Spell the word aluminum, meaning a light silver white metal. Metal. A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-U-N-I-N-A-L-
And I'll have $340. Some illiterate in the front row was hollering you were wrong. <laughs> That's right. your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? Hundred. Hundred. Is that all right hundred. with you? That's right. Uh, all right. Spell the word penitentiary, meaning a state or federal prison. P P E N I T I T R E M. No, penitentiary. P E N I. No, P E. Yes, that's right. P E N I T E M. All right, come on now. P I A R Y. That's right. And now spell it. One of you spell it. P E N I T E M T I A R Y. That is right. You went all the way. You wind up with four hundred forty dollars. So well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. Thank you so much. Doctor, we invited some girls who worked for an aircraft plant to our factory tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected June French to be on the show, and her partner is Mr. Albert Hall. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the Soda Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. Albert Hall and uh, June French. June, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. 21, yes. and uh, what's your hometown? Mineola, Texas. Mineola, Texas? Is there a town named Mineola? Yes, sir. Where is that near? Oh, it's about 80 miles east of Dallas. You, well, how far is that from Neiman Marcus? That is Neiman Marcus. Oh. Are you married? Yes. You are? Yes. Well, you're pretty young to be married, aren't you? I've been married six years. You were married when you were 15? Yes. Boy, they catch them early down there, don't they? Huh? No, I caught him early. Oh. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Most women are not. <laughs> Mr. Hall, uh, where are you from? Originally from Kansas. Born in Kansas. <laughs> Farm. Well, you don't have to get angry about it. Huh? <laughs> Guy's trying to hypnotize me. I'm not afraid to ask him any more Kansas? <laughs> Did you grow up on a farm back there in Kansas? Uh, no, I left when I was 10 years old. Uh-huh. Your name is Albert Hall? Yes. Well, that's in London. Isn't that where the musicians uh, play in the concerts? Oh, yes. Are you, uh, did you know that? Were you oh, named after that place? Evidently. I, I didn't select the name. Oh. <laughs> such a soft job up here. Huh? <laughs> Last time I come down here without my blackjack. <laughs> Where did you go when you left the farm? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> what were you doing there? Well, I went to school there. And when I quit school, I got a job on the Nebraska State Journal as a printer's devil. <laughs> Will you ask him the next question? <laughs> you were a printer's devil. Well, why did you get fired? Or maybe you weren't the type, huh? I didn't get fired. Oh. Al, are you married? Oh, yes. You are, huh? How long have you been married, Al? Forty-two years. Is your wife out here with you? Yes, she's in the audience. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, what sort of work have you been doing lately? Uh, well, homicide? I came to Seattle and I got a job on the Seattle You imagine train. if he doesn't win any money here, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> I'm leaving long before that. 
<laughs> you say you went to Seattle and you got a job on the paper? Seattle Times in the composing room. I see. <laughs> and how long were you there? Fifteen <laughs> years. Maybe I can out frighten them. <laughs> Boy, would he fit in all of Dickens' stories, huh? <laughs> well, Jim, what kind of work do you do? I'm a messenger. I feel safe on asking you. <laughs> You're a messenger? Well, what do you do as a messenger? Do you deliver messages? No, I deliver blueprints and supplies and food or anything else to, to put the engineers want. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> You said food, so you and Gargantua each get $50. <laughs> All right, all right, beat it, Doc. Now, who do you deliver these things to? To the engineers. Uh -huh. Well, how are you dressed? Uh, do you wear this kind of an outfit? Uh, well, yes, skirts, blouses, sweaters. Uh -huh. You know, better be careful. You know, I know something about engineers. They all have plans of their own, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do these engineers... Charm him. <laughs> Mr. Hall, I am reluctant to do this, but let's get back to you. Uh... <laughs> what are you doing in Hollywood, and who are you frightening? <laughs> what are you doing here at present, Mr. Hall? Well, things get tough up in the mountains. No money. I came to Hollywood to find out how they make money. <laughs> well, how do they make money? Uh, I walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard. And I come to the conclusion that 50% of them there are on relief. <laughs> The other 40% are going around to these banks and loan companies. There's three or four in Everbach. I think you've got something there. Now, have you decided on the type of work that you'd like to do in Hollywood? What would you like to do, Al, as long as you're out here now? You're not doing anything. Well, what you're doing there looks kind of soft. It is, but I don't want it to get around, that's all. Just, uh, I guess the jig is up. <laughs> well, Al, the thing is up for loose chatter. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first two couples are tied with $440. Uh, you both understand the rules of the game. Now, you select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Let it be All right. How much? She says 100. 100. Okay. What country is separated by 1,000 miles of the Republic of India? Pakistan. Pakistan is right. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You now have $200. Now, just so that we don't have any confusion on the next questions, consult before you answer, because he might have said something else. And you wouldn't have won the money. All right, what are you going to go for now? $90. $90. Now, one answer. What great river is sacred to the Hindus? It empties into the Bay of Bengal. Ganges. Ganges is right. <laughs> All right, you now have $290. Uh, hey, you're pretty lucky to have a gal like that oh, with you. Oh, ain't I always been lucky all my life, Groucho. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Al. Now, what are you going to go for? 80. Yeah, yeah, that's... 80. The city of Buffalo, New York, is located on which of the Great Lakes? Erie. Lake Erie is right. What happened to that talk I gave you? Uh, you now have $370. Now, I, what are you going to go for? <laughs> yeah. This is your last chance to beat the other couple. Sure. $70. Yeah. $70. What is the largest city in Finland? It is also the capital. Now, one answer. Talk it over, please. 
Helsinki? I don't know. Helsinki? That's right. Helsinki. <laughs> And you'll wind up with four hundred and forty dollars, <laughs> and that means that all three I of our couples tonight. I get everybody married in this show if they're married or not. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> that means that all three of our couples tonight, in just one minute, will get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth two thousand dollar question. Everybody, tie. <laughs> I have a question for you, and it's a very important one. Is your car safe to drive? Can you see safely? Can you steer safely? Can you stop safely? Well, if you're not absolutely sure, take your car to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. You make certain your car is a safe car. You'll make an expert check of your brakes, tires, headlights, taillights, steering, and all other important safety features. He'll make sure your car is safe and dependable and tell you if you need any adjustments or repairs. And if you do, he'll make them quickly and at a reasonable cost. His technicians are specially trained and they use the very latest equipment and factory approved methods. They'll make your car a safe car. From headlights that enable you to see clearly at night to taillights that enable other drivers to see you. Everything that's important to your safety will be put in tip-top condition. And it won't take long. In a short time, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will make your car a safe car. And at a reasonable cost. No matter what make of car you drive, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. Make sure your car is a safe car. Well, Roger, here are the three couples all tied for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. We've given them little slips of paper. They'll write down one answer between them. And uh, if they all get it right, we'll uh, split the money among all of them. For $2,000, what was the name of the famous English jurist whose commentaries are fundamental in any study of English law? All right, what are the answers? Mr. DeRay? Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doré's answer is nothing. June French and Al Hall's answer is nothing. Mariana Ehrlich and Vine Cameron's answer is also nothing. This one has got Hoyle, but that's wrong. It's Sir William Blackstone, a very famous man <coughs> in the history of jurisprudence. I'm sorry you all lost. That means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, they lost the big money, but they all did pretty well in the, well in the quiz, didn't they, George? Yes, all the way. Each. How much did they each win? Each couple won $440. Well, congratulations to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight and to both of you and to everybody else. <laughs> Go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell him Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. This is George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. The month of May has been designated as National Car Safety Check Month. To check accidents, take your car in for a safety check without delay.